Hello, my name is Jane Nicole Miller and today I will be talking about the Stonewall Book Awards. More specifically, I will be talking about the Mike Morgan and Larry Roman's Children's and Young Adult Literature Award. So first, a little bit of history about the Stonewall Book Award. It's presented by the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Roundtable, GLBTRT, of the American Library Association. It's awarded annually at the ALA conference and was first awarded in 1971. The winners receive a commemorative plaque in $1,000. In addition to this, they get the Stonewall Book Award seal on the cover of their book. So this is a little timeline about the history of the Stonewall Book Award. It's gone through a number of changes, particularly name changes, in an effort to become more inclusive and this shows that evolution. In 1971, it was established as the Gay Book Award. In 1986, it became an ALA Award, and the following year was renamed to the Gay and Lesbian Book Award. In 1990, the award was split into two categories, one for fiction and one for nonfiction. In 1994, it was renamed the Gay, Lesbian, and Bisexual Book Award, and in 99, it was renamed the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Book Award. In 2002, the award was renamed to the Stonewall Book Award, with the Barbara Giddings Literature Award and the Israel Fishman Nonfiction Award. In 2010, the Children and Young Adult Literature Award was established, and in 2012, this award was renamed to the Mike Morgan and Larry Romans Children's and Young Adult Literature Award. So as I said, this Children's and Young Adult Literature Award was first awarded in 2010. In order to be considered for this award, a book must meet certain criteria. It must be an English language work. It must have been published the year prior to the announcement date. It must be for children or teens. And it must relate to the gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender experience. So the first book we're going to talk about today is Drama by Raina Telgemeier. This was an honor book in 2013, and it's a comic for the 10 to 14 age range. When Callie's middle school puts on a new theatrical production, she throws herself into designing the best set ever. Crushes, unrequited love, and middle school drama make life even more complicated. So this is an interesting example of an honor book for this award, because the award is set to celebrate the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender experience, but Callie, the protagonist of this comic, is a cisgender straight girl. Now, at the beginning of the book, she becomes friends with two boys, twin brothers, Jesse and Justin. Shortly after this, Justin becomes a bit more comfortable with her and comes out to her as gay. Over the course of the book, there are a couple more queer characters who come out or are introduced, and this kind of mirrors the experience of middle school where a lot of kids are starting to explore their sexual orientation and identity. So even though this book is not necessarily about specifically one character who is queer, it's about a girl kind of learning more about the people around her. And I think it kind of normalizes that experience, which is one of the reasons I believe it was selected as an honor book for this award. The next book we're going to talk about is When Aiden Became a Brother by Kyle Lukoff. This was one of the winners from 2020. It's a picture book for the four to seven age range. Everyone thought that Aiden was a girl when he was born, but he knew better. When his mother gets pregnant again, he helps prepare to welcome the new baby and make them feel like they will have the opportunity to be themselves completely just like him. So this is an adorable book about a transgender little boy whose parents didn't really understand at first, but educated themselves and accepted their child completely for who he is. There's a lovely scene where the parents have a little meeting with other parents of transgender kids while the kids have a play date. And it's this beautiful celebration kind of of that community and that support that is so important for queer children. So when Aiden's mother gets pregnant again, rather than saying, oh, we're having a boy or we're having a girl, she instead says, we're having a baby when people ask which is a, a beautiful example of the lesson that she learned from her son. Aiden gets very involved in welcoming the new baby and helps to decorate 
the baby's nursery with gender neutral colors and designs and also brainstorm some gender neutral names. He's very excited and also a little bit nervous about becoming a big brother. And it's just a very heartwarming story that will make you smile. So let's take a look at some of the past winners and honors. So this year, the 2020 winners were When Aiden Became a Brother, like by Kyle Lukoff, and The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. The 2020 honors were Pet by a Quakey Yemezi and Like a Love Story by Adby Nazimian, as well as The Best at It by Malik Pencholi. The 2019 winners were Julian is a Mermaid by Jessica Love and Hurricane Child by Casey Callender. The 2019 honors were Ivy Aberdeen's Love Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake and Picture Us in the Light by Kelly Loy Gilbert. The 2018 winners were The 57 Bus, A True Story of Two Teenagers and the Crime That Changed Their Lives by Dashka Slater and Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. The 2018 honors were As the Crow Flies by Melanie Gilman and The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Now, 2018 is a very interesting year for this award, in my opinion. Every single one of these books in the winner and honor list are set for young adult. Although, the, uh, the every one of the books on this list for 2018 are for young adults, though you could make the argument that a couple of them are older middle grade. The 57 Best by Dashka Slater, one of the winners for this year, is a nonfiction account for teens. Nowhere on this list, though, is a picture book or a book intended for a, a younger audience than maybe middle school age. If we look at other years, there are picture books in the winners and young adult middle grade novels being celebrated as well. So what's interesting about this award is that there's not a set level of oh, there must be X number of books for this age range or each age range must be represented. It's more of a best of the best for all literature from birth to 18, which is an interesting choice for this award. And I would be surprised if in the future it's not split into some sort of children's award and young adult award in order to encompass the number of queer books for youth that are now coming out. We're still not necessarily flooding the market, but there's been a huge surge in the number of LGBT books for youth that have come out in the past few years. So some quick takeaways about the Stonewall Book Awards. They're a great starting point. They are not the be all end all. So some of the books on this list are books that I personally am not a fan of. Some of the books on the list I absolutely adore. It's all going to be down to taste and opinion, and that's a very personal thing. But for people who are interested in adding more LGBTQ plus books for youth to their collection, the Stonewall Book Awards are a great place to start. They'll give you some good titles, some of the really, really popular ones, some that people know about and are interested in, and they're a great way to begin your search for queer books and also to begin expanding your own horizons in reading. But remember that they are not the be all end all. These are book awards are selected by people. And that doesn't mean that it's necessarily your favorite book ever that's queer is going to be on the list. But there are some really great ones and I do do highly recommend checking out When Aiden Became a Brother. It is probably one of my favorite picture books of all time. So that concludes my presentation, and thank you for listening. Now go out and read queer.